hello welcome to my channel so today I'm talking about magnesium deficiency um, and one of the potential symptoms of magnesium deficiency is depression uh, but as is often the case it is not just that one symptom um, when you've got a deficiency of something whether it's vitamin D or magnesium or whatever there's usually several symptoms so I'll mention some of those now the list is not exhaustive um, it's just sort of a handful of things that you may be suffering with if you want a more comprehensive list you can read the magnesium miracle by Carolyn Dean she's a bit of an expert on magnesium so some of the symptoms high blood pressure heart attacks sudden death that's quite a serious one um, hardening of the arteries leg cramps migraines or headaches in general uh, i've got a colleague actually who suffered from migraine headaches and i suggested he take some magnesium and I, he significantly reduced his migraine attacks um maybe if he'd taken more he'd have got rid of them altogether i don't know uh anxiety panic attacks twitching and ticks i know for myself i've had quite bad twitching I remember I, uh, I had a twitch there which used to drive me mental in fact I went to the doctors with it because it was driving me crazy um, and she said if it carries on we'll look into getting Botox injections for you how about looking into why I've got the tick wouldn't that be a better idea I mean I, I was very I was doing my degree um, and I was very stressed at the time and as we'll see, stress depletes magnesium. So maybe that was the issue. I don't have it now, so that's good. Uh, irritability and anger. That can be a symptom of magnesium deficiency. Hair loss. Is that a symptom? Um, yeah, uh, and that can be linked with, as well, if you're a female, obviously, PMS, premenstrual syndrome. I know I've had that bad in the past. When I was younger, terrible. I suffered from PS, PMS very badly. Um, I'd get into rages about things. And apparently high high estrogen and even high progesterone can reduce your magnesium. So, which is why women get PMS, you know, before the period. They can feel shit basically um and that's a technical term menstrual pain and cramps again because magnesium relaxes muscles it's a relaxant calcium contracts the uterus is a muscle and if you're low on magnesium you might get bad stomach cramps before your period or during your period um tingling in hands and feet sleep issues so insomnia if you've got a problem going to sleep problem staying asleep maybe it's magnesium deficiency muscle weakness type 2 diabetes tiredness and low energy um like i say that's just some of the potential symptoms you can check out more symptoms in caroline dean's book so risk factors so things that might make you more susceptible to having magnesium deficiency these are just some of them a high sugar diet so refined sugar because firstly a ref refined sugar has no goodness in it i mean sugar beets have got some minerals in but of course it's picked and processed to death and then it's left with virtually well nothing in it you know, there's no goodness in sugar refined sugar and so you take that in which lots of us do because uh, sugar is quite addictive isn't it and our body needs to use minerals to process it so not only is it devoid devoid of any goodness it's actually using your minerals so mineral um sources sources <laughs> no that's not the word i'm looking for anyway it's using your minerals and depleting them more so if you're eating sugar a lot it's depleting your magnesium 
um, which can lead to more tiredness, more irritability, depression, anxiety, which might make you reach for more sugary foods because we do that because there's comfort in it and it gives us immediate sort of boost but long term it's not a good idea uh drinking too much coffee alcohol again alcohol is something that we'll turn to if we're stressed out or depressed or whatever again it's uh, seems like it's a short-term fix but long term not a good idea chronic stress or any kind of stress really my, just going to the gym and working out excessively. Firstly, that's it triggers a sort of stress response, so adrenaline gets pumped out and that depletes magnesium. And also, if we're sweating a lot while we're exercising, we're losing magnesium. Chronic pain is a source of stress. So if you're in chronic pain, then you could be losing magnesium. Well, you probably are losing magnesium. Uh, loud noises even so if, if you work in an environment which is noisy then you're under constant stress from that and your body's constantly trying to put you back into some sort of balance so it's using your minerals to to try and do that also low stomach acid which is more likely if you're sort of 50 plus it starts reducing and also people on certain medications like uh, proton pump inhibitors such as amiprazole, lanzaprazole. And from what I've read, like one of those tablets can reduce the stomach acid for a whole day. I've reduced it or completely get rid of it, but it reduces it enough to cause problems. And I think it is doing because you need stomach acid to break down your food so that you can get the goodness from it. So if you've got low stomach acid, you're not breaking down your food and not getting the minerals. Well, there's iron and, that's probably all iron, yeah. Iron, I've said iron now. <laughs> Come on, think. Uh, B12, <laughs> magnesium, possibly other minerals as well. Yes, so that's an issue. Uh, I will do a video on low stomach acid actually and the problems it's creating. So what are the best sources of magnesium? I mean diet should always be your first port of call where nutritional deficiencies are concerned but certainly where magnesium is concerned there's there's not a great deal in a lot of the foods that we eat. There should be, but because it's, a lot of food is grown in soil which has been extensively farmed, therefore leaving it sort of depleted of uh, minerals, then the, then the produce is also depleted of mineral. And that's a bit of an issue. You know, statistics have shown that it's you know the goodness the vitamins and minerals whatever in the in the soil have reduced by like 50 percent or something over the past 50 years or something like that the figures are absolutely spot on but just trust me on this okay <laughs> our soils are not full of all the goodness they should be um which is a reason why organic produce is a better option so not only you're not getting the toxic residues from the pesticides and everything uh, you are hopefully getting more goodness from the food itself and I know some people can't afford organic because it is generally more expensive but sometimes it's only a matter of a few pence more expensive um, and you know maybe the more people eat the more the price will go down and it's like you say I can't afford to but can you afford not to this is your health we're talking about. Um, but anyway, that's up to you. So good sources, diet-wise, uh, food-wise, are dark green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, 
whole grains, although I'd avoid wheat, because wheat is not good for a lot of people. Fish, dark chocolate, your dark chocolate, don't all rush out and buy a galaxy. Thinking, right, I'm getting in magnesium, I'll just live on galaxies. Uh, because that won't work. And there's a lot of sugar in galaxy. And uh, you know what I've just said about sugar. Also kelp, avocados. There's, there's various foods that contain it. And certainly, where your health's concerned, you should be eating a whole food diet anyway. Because that's the best way to eat. We should avoid processed foods. And where you can eat organic, do. So, is there anything else I've got to say about that? Ah, yes, of course. Um, supplements. So, if you don't think that you're getting it from your food, then you can try supplements. There's different kinds of supplements. There's obviously the oral supplements. Some people find they're a bit difficult to take because they can cause diarrhea, basically. Um, but there's different kinds of magnesium. One to avoid, from what I've read, is magnesium oxide, which is often in uh, supplements, because that's got the least bioavailability, and that means it's not being absorbed. So, or it absorbed very well. So the citrate, malate, gluconate, taurinate, there's different ones, and you can try try different ones and see what seems to work with you. Uh, or if you've got stomach issues, let's like say you've got low stomach acid or some kind of issue that means that you don't absorb things very well, you could try a transdermal magnesium supplement, which is basically you a spray magnesium oil, you spray it on your skin, um, so arms and legs twice a day, and you're not going to get any kind of toxic overload with that, but it'll get absorbed, so you will be getting some. Uh, or you could take an Epsom salt bath, now you could just have you know a proper bath two or three times a week, maybe more if you want, I don't, you know, I don't think you're going to overload on magnesium. If you did it every day um, or you could put have a foot bath certainly if you know you're in a job where you stand up all day and your feet ache coming home and putting your, your feet in a, a little foot bath with some magnesium would be a nice thing to do when you're getting your magnesium as well the bath that's a good thing to do before bed i say if you've got in insomnia or sleep issues then a magnesium bath before bed could help with that and I think that's all I want to say about magnesium. So if you if you can relate to any of those um, deficiency symptoms, perhaps that you know you have got a deficiency. If you've got any questions, put them up, and I'll try and answer them if I can. If you like this video, say so. <laughs> and if you if you want to subscribe, subscribe. Obviously, you're not going to subscribe if you don't want to, but it, if you did, that'd be awesome. So, I'll just shut my face now um, and see you in the next video. Bye!